Hey, it's me James and in this video I'm going to be presenting another three card spread that I use in my personal practice. So stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in and joining me for this second installment of the card spreads video series that I started mm, some time ago, right? I stepped away from YouTube for a little bit um, because two words, life happened, right? But I am back and I'm so excited to be presenting this particular installment. In video one, I showed you a three card spread that I use in my personal and professional practice with clients and it is called the Situation guidance, outcome spread. If you didn't see that installment, I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. But I'm going to be presenting another three card. It's a slight variation in terms of how the cards are laid out for this one. But I call it the focus and factor spread. So in the next segment, we're going to lay out the cards. I'm going to take one of my decks and show you how to lay out the cards. And then I'm going to give you three example readings using three different decks that I've made myself. So with that, let's move to the table and take a look at how to lay out the focus and factors spread. And here we are with the cards on the table. And so for this demo of how to lay out the focus and factors spread, I'm going to be using my very own Kipper deck. I made this for myself and it is called the Kipper of Him. And so the way you want to lay this spread out as I said in the opener, this is a very easy three card spread layout. So you want to take the first card. Card one is going to go in the center. And this is going to represent the focus. Okay, and then you're going to take card two, lay it to the left. And this is going to be one of the two factors that are tied to or connected to the focus card. And then the third card, card three, goes over on the right-hand side. So they're all going to be in a line, but the way you read it is card number one is going to be the focus, and then cards two and three are going to be external factors that are connected to the focus. Meaning like if this is the theme or the focus of the day, then these two cards are ways that the theme gets played out. All right, and so that's very simple. That is the focus and factor spread. So now we're going to go ahead and do the first of three demo example readings. All right, and we are back. And we, again, we're going to be using the Kipper of Him for this first example of the focus and factor spread. So I'm going to take the deck in hand. I'm going to shuffle. And one thing that you could do with the focus and factor spread is that you can generally ask the question, what do I need to focus on today? focusing on that question, no pun intended, as I shuffle the cards. Okay, so that's good enough. I'm going to go ahead and cut the cards away from me, which is what I usually do in these demos. And then because I like to, I like to fan out the cards, so I'm going to do that next. And I'm just going to be looking for three cards in the fan that are getting my attention. One, two, go over here for card three. Okay, so now I have my three cards in the stack. I'm going to take the remainder of the deck and I'm going to remove it and put it to one side. So now I have three, two, one. I'm going to lay them out again. Card one goes in the middle, two to the left, and then three to the right. Okay. So I ask a general question, what do I need to focus on today? So we're going to look at the first card, card one in the middle. This is the focus. Okay, so now the card in the middle is win lots. So this card usually talks about uh, financial windfalls. Um, luck. So this could be focusing on, you know, a lucky break or um, taking some kind of chance. 
because I go with the idea of gambling. So it could be gambling would be like taking chances, taking risks. So there may be something that uh, I need to consider taking a risk or a chance on as the theme or the focus of the day. You know, where do I feel lucky? Where do I need to put maybe a lot of tension or focus? Because win loss is also about a lot of something or multiples of something. So there is that. Now, it could also be because of the red border, the win lots card is a stop card. So it could just indicate, you know, full stop, this is it, um, period, end of the story in terms of the focus, right? So now we take a look at the external two cards for maybe possible factors throughout the day that may be tied to this or connected to this. So on the left, we have card two. Okay, so young gentleman, this makes sense to me. So young gentleman is a card for me that can represent someone younger than me. So this could be a younger brother. I do have a younger brother. Um, it could also represent some other younger person in my life if it's not a family member, right? But for me, this has a secondary meaning. This card can also represent um, business and finance because he's wearing a suit, right? So if I go with this, these two, if this is the focus, you know, taking a chance, taking a risk at something, it might be either business related or financial related. So this might be like a card of opportunity, right? But it may have something to do with business. And I'm going to read into the image here. It may be something that I'm well suited for or something that suits me, right? Because he's wearing a suit, right? So there's that. That's one possibility. And now over here on the right hand side. Okay. So now we have journey. Okay. So now the first thing that I notice here is that we have a card that is a movement card, right? For me, the green card or the green bordered cards, excuse me, represent movement cards. So we're moving from uh, a situation that maybe doesn't have a whole lot of movement around it to something that moves. So this could be something that is progressive, something that moves forward, something that's advancing, right? Just because of the ID here of the green border. But now let's take a look at this. So now this is a card for me that can represent travel of course, because it's journey and there's a ship on the card. But for me, this card can also represent shipping. So it could mean that there's going to be maybe some progress or movement on uh, something involving shipping, right? And it may be tied to something having to do with my business. Now, I will say this, that I have created another um, Oracle deck of cards. And so there may be something regarding um, the progress on that because the last time I checked it was in production. So I may now be moving from being in production to uh, the beginning of the shipping process and it's being um, printed overseas, yeah? Because I'm looking at the image here and there's something over water. So now I will have to check that because it says, what do I need to focus on? Now for me, personally speaking, the Oracle deck that I'm working on is one that I would like to use or incorporate into my business practice, right? So there is that. So that's how I would read that for me, right? And so you have to take into account when you're doing these kinds of readings, uh, you know your own life better than anybody else will. And you know kind of how it proceeds from day to day most days, right? I mean, we all don't, um, we aren't all able to predict our life to a T, right? There are sometimes life throws us a curve or things that we weren't expecting, you know, that kind of thing. But uh, generally speaking, you should know uh, how your life kind of proceeds uh, regularly to see what's in the card. So that's what I would see for myself. And that is one example of how to use the focus and factor spread. And so now we're going to go ahead and pick these cards up and move to a different deck with a different type of example or intention. And we are back for our second example of the focus and factor spread and for this example, I'm going to be using another one of my own personal decks, and this is the Gypsy Witch Oracle. It is my take on the Gypsy Witch cards. Okay, so for this one, I was thinking that we asked a general question in the first example about what do I need to focus on for the day. For this one, we could probably add a little more of an intention or give it a little more context. So let's just say that... Um, we're going to be asking about our love life, okay? And so um, maybe we could ask in the course of a relationship, of a specific relationship, what do I need to focus on in my relationship with 
fill in the blank. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to say, let's say we have a woman named Mary, and she's seeing a man named John. They're in a relationship. And maybe they hit a little bit of a challenging period, right? A little bit of a bump in the road. And so Mary is asking the cards, what do I need to focus on in improving my relationship with John? Notice what I did there. So now we gave just a little bit more of a nuance or, or a context, right? So she's aware that there's a challenge in the relationship and she wants to know what she can do on her side of the line to improve the relationship. So that's the question. What does Mary need to know about improving her relationship with John? And what does she need to focus on, okay? So we're going to shuffle the cards with that in mind. Okay, I think that's good for the shuffling. I'm going to go ahead and now cut the deck as I did in the previous example. Fan them out. And again, I'm looking for three cards in the fan that are getting my attention. It's card one. I'll go with this is card two. And card three. Okay, so I have my three cards. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pick the remainder of the deck up. And I'm going to move it to one side. Okay, so we have three, two, one. Remember, lay them out. First card goes in the middle. It is the focus or the theme. Second card goes on the left. Third card on the right. Okay. So now remember the question. So Mary's asking, what do I need to focus on in improving my relationship with John? Okay. Middle card is the focus. Okay. So here we have the dog. So... It says here, based on my meanings for dog, that the focus here is on being loyal, being trustworthy, being faithful. These are all words that I associate with dog, right? So, because it represents friendship, partnership, companionship. It also represents help, support, advice, you know, being trustworthy, faithful, and loyal. So, it could just be a matter of how can she be a little more faithful in regard to the relationship in terms of its improvement, right? First of having faith that it's going to improve, right? What can she do to help and support John, right? As his partner in the relationship, yeah? So that's what I'm seeing with dogs. So now we have what uh, playing card inserts, right? And so I tend to read the playing card inserts as well, separate from the symbol. So here we have the uh, four of diamonds the Four of Diamonds is a card that represents, uh, I'm looking at it as build, building a solid foundation, yeah? Because the diamonds represents the physical, the material, uh, the tangible, yeah? And then the Four is all about structure, it's all about foundation, yeah, it's, it's a building number, right? And it's also about hard work, right? So for Mary asking the question, it may be a matter of remembering what the foundation is for the relationship with John and how solid is it, right? Because I'm hearing in my head um, the song um, by Ashford and Simpson, Solid as a Rock, yeah? So that's what I would see with the dog as the symbol and the four of diamonds as the playing card insert. Now let's move over here. Now remember, if this is the theme, these are two things that maybe can factor into the theme. All right, so here we have mouse as the one side. So here we have um, uh, stress, we have worry. Um, we have this idea about something being lessened and diminished, yeah. You know, there's something that's slowly eroding, slowly decaying, right? So it could just be a matter of what it is the faithfulness, the trustworthiness, the loyalty. Is that, is that eroding away? What's causing that to erode away? What's causing her, Mary? Because whenever I do readings for people, I always read to the person who's asking the question, right? So this is, I'm putting this with Mary, right? 
So is she stressed out about something? Is she worried about something? Is she worried about losing something in regards to this relationship? Yeah. That would be the mouse. You know, what's ruining it? What's spoiling it? What's contaminating it? All those things are related to mouse, right? And then we have the uh, six of spades as the insert for me. Now, spades is a suit that represents problems, troubles, um, obstacles, limitations, and restrictions. Put that with the number six. The six is um, about responsibility and communication. So it could just be a matter of, if we go back to the idea that the dog might be a card about help and support, right? Then this card would be about taking responsibility. That meaning that there's somebody in the relationship or maybe both parties, right? Who are not taking responsible responsibility, excuse me, for certain things that are taking place in the relationship, right? And it could also be, is there a problem with communication? Right. And how can we better, you know, restructure that, rebuild that, that kind of thing. Um, but there's something that's been lost that needs to be rebuilt. If I go with the symbol of the mouse and then the four of diamonds. The last thing I want to say about the six of spades, it's also a card that can talk about eliminating the dead wood. Right. So that's a metaphor for saying, you know, cutting out what's not working. Right. So that's what I would see here. This is one of the. Um, factors, right, that's influencing this. So now let's take a look at card three. It's another possible fact. Oh, yeah. Okay. So here we have broken glass. So now we have two challenging symbols, right? Broken glass for me can represent reflection, but in this particular case, it usually represents like someone's image has been shattered, right? So then if I bring these two cards back to the middle card, there may be a lack of faith or a lack of trust in this relationship, and that's the issue, right? These two cards are just reflecting, no pun intended because of the broken glass, this aspect that's being highlighted in the middle, right? And I love the idea about the yellow background here. It's almost like a highlighter marker, right? It's highlighting that. It's the brightest card of the three. It's like saying, this is it. This is it, right? But this card for me usually represents somebody's image of another person is being shattered or has been shattered, right? And now the Eight of Diamonds. Right. So the Eight of Diamonds is a card for me that can represent um, record keeping, accounting. So it could be like somebody is taking on the role, the image or the identity of the record keeper, right? And what that means for me is like somebody who's keeping record, quote unquote, of things that are either being done or not done, you know, uh, things of that nature, right? And that could be a, a problematic role to be playing in a relationship. So that's one aspect. The other thing about the eight of diamonds is that for me, it represents spectacles. Like I wear glasses. Glasses is another word for spectacles, right? So it could be about the way something is being seen, right? And with the shattered glasses, that could be problematic. Like the way we're seeing the situation is not helpful, right? So that is what I would say here. I would say that the focus here is either on being loyal, trustworthy, supportive, helpful, uh, those kinds of qualities in dog, right, in terms of the partnership. I love this as, the, as a focus card because it, it reads into the context, right? We have a, a partnership or a relationship here, and these are, are things that... Mary could focus on in improving that. But on this side, it could be a matter of worry, stress, and anxiety that's factoring into that. And either taking on a, a lack of responsibility or uh, not being communicative enough in terms of uh, communication with John. And then here it could be a matter of has someone uh, had their image of the other person shattered? Meaning how has that other person either disappointed them, not uh, met their expectations, you know, has not fulfilled expectations, things of that nature. So that's what I would see with these cards, right? But I love the fact that she's asking the question because now she could look at these and saying, what can I do to change my mindset over here, right? Because suit of spades is air. And then with diamonds, and she's got two diamonds here, it's like, what, how can I take that and apply that practically in terms of maybe action, like putting that into action in my everyday 3D real world experience. So that is what I see with these three cards. 
and that is another example of the focus and factor spread. And so now we'll pick these cards up and do our final example for this video. And we are back with our third and final uh, example reading to round out this video. And for this one, I'm going to be using a deck I made earlier this year. And it is an Angel Oracle card deck, and it is called the Angel Insights Oracle. This particular um, deck is what I call my pocket edition because it is the size of playing cards, but I have also made a standard Oracle card Oracle card size, excuse me, version of this deck. Again, this is the Angel Insights Oracle by yours truly. And so for this one, I, I created this deck because I wanted to form more of a bond or connection to my guardian angels. So I'm going to be using this deck and asking my angels to offer me something in terms of guidance or insight in terms of a focus and the possible factors that are uh, weighing in on that focus, right? So I'm going to pick the cards up. And when I want to work with the angels, I usually ask uh, the question in a form of a thank you. So I'm going to just say, thank you angels for revealing to me what I need to focus on and the factors that are impacting or affecting that focus. So that is the context. And this is nice because I'm just letting spirit, or in this case the angels, tell me what I need to focus on. Right? It's a similar form of the first example where we just asked a very general. But in the general one, you could you could suppose that you're asking the card to tell you what you need to focus on. And here I'm changing the messenger from the cards to the angels through the cards. There's a little bit of a nuance there. Okay. So I'm getting my tingles, which means I'm, I can stop shuffling. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut the deck. And now I'm going to go ahead and pick the cards up. And just as I did in the previous examples, I'm going to fan the cards out. And I'm looking for three cards in the fan that are getting my attention. Card one is here. Scoop this up for card two. And then I'm looking at over here for card three. Okay. So I have the three cards. I'm going to go ahead and pick the rest of the deck up. And we're going to move that to one side. Right, so I have my three cards. Three, two, one. Remember, first card goes in the middle. This is the focus. Card two goes on the left. That is one factor to take into consideration. And then another factor over here. All right, so now we have the cards laid out. Card number one, the focus. Oh, so here we have infancy, right? So the angels are asking me to focus on, and when I say asking me, because the angels offer information and messages and guidance for our consideration, right? Because they honor free will choices. That is my experience of angels anyway. So here the focus is on infancy. So this could be something that I'm nurturing. I'm using the baby as a metaphor because I don't have an actual baby in my life. So something in its infancy stage, meaning like it's just starting out. So I'm nurturing something, taking care of something, could be a new responsibility because babies for me symbolize responsibility, right? But it's something that is in its early stages of development, yeah? So I could ask myself, what new thing have I taken on in terms of responsibility or what is in its infancy stage in terms of a responsibility that I've taken on. So I have a couple of ideas, but I'm going to look at the factor cards to give me more of an idea. Now remember, these two cards are going to give us more information about the middle card. So let's do that. Okay, completion is on the one side. So for me, completion is a card that represents uh, the ending of a cycle, the ending of a chapter. I have here in the image a person who's standing on, on land looking out into the sea and watching the sun go down. 
right? So this card represents endings, completions, and how interesting is it that we have a little bit of a, of a dichotomy here. Here we have something completing, something coming to an end, and then right the next card in the middle is the start of something new, right? So there may be infancy is coming on the heels of something that's completed, right? And again, as I said in the uh, example one with the Kipper deck, the thing that comes to my mind the most is that I completed this deck, the Angel Insights Oracle, and then right on the heels of its completion, I started the deck that I'm now calling the Inner Wisdom Oracle. That is the deck that I just completed, right? So it makes me feel like there's something attached to that. Like the angels are really wanting me to uh, invest time in in that. Now, the other thing that I'm working on, and I have to say that it's something new for me in terms of infancy. I'm starting the guidebook to the Inner Wisdom Oracle. And one of the things I find interesting is that while I'm excited about the creation process of decks, turning around and writing a guidebook has always been a challenge. And so here it could be like I need to consider the idea of actually completing a guidebook for a change, right? That would be something new for me, right? But if I'm going to take on the responsibility, at least maybe seeing it all the way through, right? So there's that. That's how I'm going to interpret that. And on this other side here, we have the love card. Okay. So now the love card is a card that can talk about a relationship or romance, you know, love and romance. I am not in a relationship right now, so then I'm going to have to look a little bit more metaphorically at this card. So it could just be, you know, maybe something that I love, something that's new and developing that I have a great deal of love or affection for, right? Or it could be that there may be another person coming in in which I'm going to have a meeting of the minds. If you notice in the image, the two gentlemen have their heads together. So it's like that idea about like putting your heads together, right? Meeting of the minds, you know, in order to come up with something, right? So it could also suggest too, like maybe if I'm feeling challenged with completing something, seeing something all the way through, it may be that I bring in another party to help me um, see it through or help me brainstorm, right? The idea that putting our heads together coming up with an idea, right? Or it could be that if I'm feeling um, that I'm taking on too much responsibility, it may be about sharing the responsibility with another person, right? It's kind of like the dog card in the Gypsy Witch example, right? So this would be a partnership, perhaps, you know, somebody else offering assistance, but we're putting our heads together to come up with something, right? So that's how I would see this. And again, I'm going to attribute it just because I know my life, how it's going at the moment. And the Inner Wisdom Oracle project is actually the biggest thing that I've got going on right now in terms of creation um, and something that's still in its infancy stage. So that is how I would look at that. So now the only other thing I could do here is I might consider the angels that might be helpful with this. Now remember I said that um, for me, I created the deck to work with my guardian angel. So, of course, it would be, you know, turning to my guardian angels first. But if I want to work with maybe perhaps um, archangel energy, which is bigger angelic energy, then for the infancy card, um, I might go with archangel Gabriel here because archangel Gabriel is said to um, be one of the angels that watches over children, right? And also, too, I'm thinking like this with like birth announcements, right? So um, Archangel Gabriel is also helpful with creative projects and endeavors in, in giving us that, that gentle nudge or push to see it through completion, right? And also to help us meet deadlines that are tied to creative projects, right? So for me, the deadline that I've given myself completion is that I wanted to have the deck done, no, the deck and the guidebook done by the end of the year. So... It could be a nod for that. Now, completion is um, tied to Archangel Azrael. And Archangel Azrael is said to assist us during times of change and transition, right? So I could call upon Archangel Azrael for, again, helping me through the transition process of the starting to the finish, right? Because all that period of time would be the transition, right? I'm moving in this transitional phase from the beginning to the end stage. So I could call on Archangel Azrael to help me with that. And then here, the love card, of course, could be the angels of love. And one of them is Archangel Shamuel. 
Archangel Shamuel is about the, you know, the eyes of God having, you know, what's the vision? You know, where do I see things going? Um, also to the angel who helps us find things. So like if I'm feeling like I, I'm not inspired, I'm not motivated to help me find the inspiration, to help me find the motivation, right? That's one thing. Um, another angel of love could be Archangel Raphael, you know, who helps us, especially in terms of maybe somebody else being brought in, help us forming the right and perfect partnership with another person. That's if another person's involved. I, I really don't see that as a possibility. I'm, I'm pretty um, self-contained in that regard. So um, it could just be maybe, uh, maybe dual aspects of myself even, right? If this is about my relationship with myself, let's say, how is it that maybe the more positive aspects versus the not so positive aspects, how can I integrate them? Yeah, that's what's coming to me in the moment if I want to see this through. Right. So maybe like, for instance, the moments when I'm feeling really inspired and motivated versus the times where I'm feeling, you know, somewhat uh, uh, tied in uh, procrastination energy. Yeah. And how can I, you know, maybe meet those opposite polarities somewhere in the middle? Yeah. <laughs> in an effort to complete the project. So um, so that's what I'm seeing here. So again, this would be about, you know, the possibility about something in its infancy stage, taking on responsibility. Completion would be, you know, seeing it all the way through, you know, ending something, completing something. And then love would be, you know, it could be uh, bringing somebody else in or it's something that I really love to do. You know, I have a great deal of love uh, and affection for and of course, anybody who knows me for any period of time knows that it's all about the cards. I love me some cards, right? So that's where I'm going to end that reading here. And that's also going to conclude this video. So I started this video series for Barbara. So if Barbara is watching, I hope you found this helpful. And the reason why I chose so many different Oracle decks to work with is because I wasn't sure when Barbara asked me about doing this series, um, what tool she was working with. So I figured I would do a demo using three different decks. So again, I'm going to back out just a little bit. So we want to give some props to the Angel Insights Oracle, the Gypsy Witch Oracle, and the Kipper of Him for assisting me in this video. If you hung out with me throughout this entire video, thank you so much for giving me the gift of your time. I don't take that lightly. And I look forward to seeing you in either the next installment of this video series or another video on my channel. So this is James and Mitchell signing off saying take care and have a wonderful day.